Welcome to Seniority Authority. I'm your host, Kathleen Toomey, and I track down experts to answer your questions on aging. Let's get smarter about growing older. Thanks to our show sponsor, the Riverwoods Group, Northern New England's largest family of nonprofit retirement communities, where active adults find community, purpose, and peace of mind. Visit riverwoodsgroup.org. Welcome to Seniority Authority. I'm your host, Kathleen Toomey. What happens if you're older and run out of resources? For many people who are living paycheck to paycheck, that is the fear they have. What do they do when they've outlived their assets? Every state handles things differently, but today our guest is going to share how New Hampshire, the second oldest state in the nation, provides care for those who have fewer resources. Carissa Elphick is Director of Human Service Programs, and she oversees ServiceLink offices for Belknap and Carroll County. She also manages operations for the Community Health Services Network, an integrated network of medical, behavioral health, and substance abuse disorder, as well as social service providers in the Winnipesaukee region. Welcome to the program, Carissa. Thanks so much for having me, Kathleen. It's great to have you here, and thank you for all the work that you're doing and have been doing for several years in New Hampshire. I know that you work with several government departments. What we're going to focus on today is access, explaining what services are available to people so they know where to go. So let's start with ServiceLink. What is that, and what does it offer to residents of New Hampshire? Well, ServiceLink is New Hampshire's federally designated Aging and Disability Resource Center. So here in New Hampshire, we call it ServiceLink. And there's many other Aging and Disability Resource Centers across the country. We are also New Hampshire's full access partner under New Hampshire Care Path, which is a federal program, a no round door access program, so that residents of New Hampshire can access long-term supports and services by making one phone call to one entity and get the answers that they need easily. Now, let's ask you to read the phone number. And for those who are listening to the program, we are going to have all this information in our show notes. But if you need access to long-term care or disability, what number would you call? 1-866-634-9412. And when you call that number through the magic of phone lines and cell towers, you'll get connected to your local ServiceLink Resource Center. That's great. Before we dive a little deeper into ServiceLink, are all states have the same program. Do all states call it ServiceLink or do they call it other things? For those listening outside of New Hampshire. They call it many different things, many different names, and many different formations of how to encourage folks to reach out and get information. So ServiceLink is unique to New Hampshire. There actually is legislation around providing information and referral for folks who are aging and who are experiencing disability here in New Hampshire. And that is where ServiceLink came from. So we've been around for, gosh, over 15 years. I won't get into ServiceLink 101 history here because it predates me, but we have been around around for a long time doing a lot of great things. So in addition to the phone number, I'm assuming people can Google ServiceLink New Hampshire and find your access there. Yes, we are at servicelink.nh.gov. You can find all of our information about what we do. You can find our addresses, where to physically locate us, as well as our local phone numbers, because all of our locations have local phone numbers as well. There are 10 service links across New Hampshire. There's one in every single county, sometimes two for our bigger counties. Yeah, so 10 independent contracts for Service Link Resource Center. Great. And why would I call ServiceLink? If I'm an older adult, what would you help me accomplish? Well, Kathleen, long-term supports and services is super confusing. (laughs) 
And Mm -hmm. sometimes you just need to talk to a person and you've been spending your time maybe on the internet or you don't even know where to start. You're wondering about the public resources that we have or state-sponsored resources that are available. You're wondering about community resources or you've had a friend who had a friend who you know how that goes. And you just want a one-stop shop to get the information that you need from a free resource. We're completely free. But in addition to that, we're unbiased. So we don't do what we do because we're connected to any sponsoring organizations or anything like that. We just provide unbiased information to educate consumers, to educate the public so that they can make their most informed choices based upon their preferences, their needs and what they want out of their life. So we really try to balance the information that we have and have consumers and people who are seeking resources for themselves or for family members or friends guide that conversation of what's available and try to meet their needs. Great. So it's long-term care. If you have long-term care needs, you can call. If you have disability needs, you can call. Housing needs. I have a joke, an ongoing (laughs) joke. All roads lead to service link. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Uh, Yeah. So a lot of folks, they reach us because they call 211 and they have long-term care questions around long-term supports and services and what that whole system looks like. And they'll get connected to us. Folks have questions. We provide information and referral on community resources. So where can I access a food pantry? Where can I get a ride to a doctor's appointment? All the way down to, hey, my neighbor, I think they're doing something unsafe. How do I get them the help that they need? I mean, the question sometimes that we get are a little outside the box, but the reputation that I'm really proud of that ServiceLink and the most important, our staff across the state have created is that we're not the kind of organization that you call and you get handed off to something. We're really going to dig into your question with you, no matter what it is, and really do our best to try and answer your question. And I'm really proud of the reputation that we have when people call us. They're often so grateful that somebody answered the phone. I love the fact that you have people who answer the phones. That's wonderful, especially for older adults who have issues with technology and access to the Internet and that they can pick up the phone, dial this 1-800 number and say, I need help for a ride, a long-term care partner, food, housing. I'm worried about something. The fact that they can pick up the phone and just call this number is incredible. That's such a gift. I'm so proud of that. I'm proud that New Hampshire has continued to sponsor this program year after year. I'm proud that we are. Our Aging and Disability Resource Center is rated number two in the entire country. Wow. AARP puts out a scorecard every year. It's available online. And out of all the 50 states, we are rated number two for our Aging and Disability Resource Center. I had no idea about that. Yes, it's something we should all hang our hats on. Little old New Hampshire. We have some skin in the game here. We are top rated across the country for the access that we provide for the information that they need on long-term supports and services. That is fantastic. I'm going to ask you to send me that link and I'm going to put that in our show show notes so people can see that. Of so course. do you feel enough people know about ServiceLink and know about this top rated service in New Hampshire? I don't, but I'll tell you, I think that's a loaded question because as is human nature, you're often not looking for something until you need it. Mm -hmm. So people usually stumble upon us when they're really in need of us and they need that information. I wish more people reached out to us and did some advanced planning. I always love when folks are call us in the course of the conversation. Well, this isn't right now, but I'm thinking about my future. We're thinking about retiring to New Hampshire. We're thinking about this in the future. And those conversations are always really nice to have to sort of outline what our service delivery is like in New Hampshire. And what are the good things and what are the challenging things? So we can help people plan. But typically, I would say more often than not, we're hearing from people when they're really, really in need. So I always wish we could reach people more people in advance. (laughs) All right. Well, let's see if through this podcast, we can make that happen. So when it's speaking to our listeners directly now, when would you want someone to call and what would you want them? If you had your ideal consumer, your ideal New Hampshire resident, when would they call ServiceLink and what would they ask for? 
I think anytime someone's going, it's different for everybody, of course, but it's nice to educate folks on, again, like I said, what our service delivery is like and what types of services are available and when they're available. So often people think that Medicare supports long-term care and it doesn't. That's often a question that we, you know, have to provide some education on. We often have folks who don't think they're going to qualify for any home and community-based care under Medicaid. And sometimes they do. And so there's a lot of questions that we get in clarification that we provide around Medicaid and what is that. And I didn't think I was going to qualify because of X, Y, Z reason. We work with a lot of folks who are experiencing Alzheimer's or related dementias and helping those folks to navigate those challenges and and planning in advance for progression of disease and how they can think about their support system and what they want that support system to look like. And again, how all of those paying systems line up as it relates to long-term supports and services. What does your community offer Mm -hmm. for resources for you? And I think that's what's great about ServiceLink too, is we are in every county, although we are a program of the Bureau of Elderly and Adult Services here in New Hampshire, when we're located in our counties, we all take on the feel of our areas. Yeah. Manchester is very different than Laconia, which is very different than Tamworth, Chikorua, and Berlin. You know, we all live and work in our areas, and we all take on that unique feel of our locations, too. That's awesome. Do you ever have walk-ins? Do you ever have people who say, I'd like to come in and bring my paperwork? and Or is it primarily phone work? Well, I think COVID changed that a lot. Many of us were handling things primarily over the phone and virtually for the majority of the pandemic. I think that, of course, wasn't any different than anybody else out there, any other organization. We would still see folks during that time as needed. Just because COVID happened doesn't mean our work stopped. Actually, it changed in a lot of ways. A lot of unique phone calls during the course of the pandemic and and still do. But typically, yes, we are open for walk-ins. And we work with folks on the phone. We provide home visits if we need to. If folks can't get to us, we will meet folks in the community if that's more comfortable for them. And we've done things on virtually on Zoom. We've done things, walk-ins, you name it. Seeing people in nursing homes, hospitals. Wow. So you guys are really flexible. You're kind of everywhere. Well, the basis, the really the crux of ServiceLink is providing person-centered care. So we really want to meet our consumers where they are. Mm -hmm. And if they aren't able to get to us, we don't want that to be a hindrance on them getting the information that would be most beneficial to them. That's fantastic. If you're getting smarter, help us reach more minds. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts so others know we're legit. Tell your friends to follow us on social or subscribe to our newsletter at senioritytyauthority.org. You said that you get a lot of different phone calls and you kind of cover the waterfront in terms of issues. But what are you finding that the major needs are of seniors in New Hampshire? We provide a lot of Medicare counseling. That's one of the, our core programs is to provide Medicare counseling through the state health insurance assistance program. So we work with folks who are new to Medicare. We work with folks who have billing questions or questions around fraud. We work with folks during Medicare's annual enrollment period to compare prescription drug plans. And every year we uh, calculate our cost savings for helping folks switch their prescription drug plans. And we provide education around those plans and the different offerings. And I think we typically average around two and a half to $3 million in cost savings across the state. Wow. In one of our years, we saved one individual person $50,000 from switching their plan. So it can be pretty dramatic. And the time to come to switch your Medicare plan is in the fall. Is that correct? Yes, it is October 15th through December 7th every year. Okay, fantastic. So that's a really important piece to remember. Now, you've been in this role for about four years. What changes have you seen, Carissa, in either the needs of uh, the seniors in New Hampshire or the awareness of what ServiceLink does? What's changed in the four years you've been involved in this program? Well, you know, I think not much has changed 
actually, but it's become more. New Hampshire is the second oldest state in the country. We're tied with Maine, I believe it is. Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire, we are the oldest state. We're a very rural state. So we have a rapidly aging demographic. And I think it's important to remember that we have a lot of folks retiring here, and we have a lot more people reaching out for the questions that they have around long-term support services. I think another unique piece of this puzzle is COVID. We had folks who were in nursing facilities. We had folks who were leaving nursing facilities because of COVID. And I think it really shed a light on home and community-based care and the importance of home and community-based care. People who work in aging services field, you know, it's no brainer to us that aging in your community is the most ideal. And if I can say that COVID brought, I mean, if there was any positive, it was that it shed a light on the importance of aging in our community. Mm -hmm. Um, in our homes. I really hope that that continues and that we continue to really pay attention to that shift. New Hampshire has a lot of folks living in nursing homes and proportionately not as many living in the community that are supported by public programs. And by that, I mean Medicaid. And my hope is that we'll continue to support the shift to to support people in their homes, Mm -hmm. in their community and in a least restrictive environment so that they can age in place. Now, I know that you said earlier that people call when there's a crisis and when they need something. But I also know that the organizations that you are working with prioritize healthy aging. How do you communicate the healthy aging programs that you have and how do you encourage people to take part in that? How do you reach out to people about that? Yeah, all of our service links have partners under New Hampshire Care Path. Again, no, our no wrong door system. So we partner with our local area agencies supporting people with disabilities. We're working with our community mental health centers. We do a lot of public outreach. So mm-hmm. we're often, again, COVID aside, we're often in the community sharing our mission, going to groups, going to support groups, working with other community partners. Here in my two counties, in Belknap and Carroll County, we are actively involved in our public health networks. So we're involved with the Winnipesaukee Public Health Council here in the Belknap area, and we're involved with Carroll County Coalition for Public Health in Carroll County. In Carroll County, we're also involved in Mount Washington Valley Age-Friendly Community. In my two areas, we very much are affiliated with those groups who are spreading the mission of healthy aging and working with other organizations to bring some initiatives into the community. It sounds like you guys are doing a lot of great work in New Hampshire to support those in need and the growing number of aging adults in New Hampshire. What can our listeners do if they want to help support your efforts? What are your greatest needs? Funding. (laughs) (laughs) So Service Link is written into our state budget every two years. So just like any other program, you know, we need funding to continue our mission to serve more people. We do a lot with a little, and I love to do a lot with a lot (laughs) (laughs) if I'm being selfish. And I think this is the platform to do it, right? Yeah. So so, like I said, we're an aging state. We need to focus on getting information to folks who are aging, folks who are living with disabilities, their caregivers, loved ones. We work with military families and veterans as well, and provide resources to those folks. And we have an excellent reputation, an excellent, you know, as demonstrated, we're number two in the country. So what we need folks to do is talk to their legislators. We need folks to write letters. We need folks to advocate on behalf of aging Americans and and folks who are aging in New Hampshire and make sure that these services remain and make sure that when it's time for them to access services, that they have service link available to meet them and that they don't have a wait to Mm -hmm. get that information. What would be the worst case for me is being so busy that we're not able to get back to people in a timely manner. And, you know, sometimes we see that now and it ebbs and flows. We get very busy at certain times of the year, but I don't want it to get to a point where we're inundated with people seeking our assistance and we have people waiting. So we need to make sure that we're maintaining it, growing what we're able to do because we are only going to have more. It's fact. We are an aging state. There's no way around it. So we are going to have more people reaching out. And we don't want to let those people fall between the cracks. So exactly, I am going to suggest that we could probably put a sample letter in our show notes for people to copy and send to their state legislator. Does that sound like a good plan to you? I think that sounds 
awesome. And I was happy to work with the Alliance for Healthy Aging to help me come up with a template for folks to use. So the Alliance for Healthy Aging does a lot of advocacy work and they were happy to provide me some examples. So for folks who are looking for more help too on advocacy, please reach out to them. They're available online. And yes, there's a letter. So I'd love for people to write a letter, to call, share your experience, especially with hopefully you've worked with us and let people know who who make decisions for us, how valuable ServiceLink was to you. Yes. Let's make sure not to leave anyone out who's living in our beautiful state. Let's make sure that we write and support the work of ServiceLink because as we've been talking to Carissa, I don't think that there's anyone you don't help in the aging and disabilities area in New Hampshire. I mean, you help everyone that calls or shows up to your door. Is that right? Yes, especially through our New Hampshire Care Path Initiative. We work with what all payers and all populations. So basically that means that boils down to if you're a younger person, if you're an older person, if you're an in-between person, <laughs> if you have Medicaid or Medicare or private insurance, if you are someone with a disability or caregiving for someone with a disability, or you're just seeking information. Truly anybody, regardless of their socioeconomic status, their ethnicity, city there, anything can reach out to ServiceLink and we would be glad to help them navigate our systems and answer their questions. So that's fantastic. I think this is a great resource for people. I hope more people start looking at ServiceLink, calling them, asking their advice, asking their recommendations. It can be a tremendous resource for you. And if we have a lot of listeners who are outside the state of New Hampshire If they want to find what a comparable agency was in their state, Carissa, is there one spot they could go to to find that out? Call ServiceLink. (laughs) (laughs) Find it. (laughs) I know we have the ability to do that. I don't know it off the top of my head, Kathleen, forgive me. But we do have the ability to find comparable resources. I've done it for friends of mine living out of state as well and found it for them. So it is something that we can do. And we will, you'll send that to me. We'll put that in the show notes. Oh, great. Um, Yeah. But I have two final questions. One is, what's your goal as the director of human services? What would you most like to accomplish within your time here? Oh, geez. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, Well, specifically for me, you know, here I am in the Winnipesaukee area and I oversee these two rural service link locations. So I I really want our communities to take a deeper dive into being age friendly in general. You know, the specifics of service link aside, I think are across the state. And again, specifically for my communities, I want us to think about healthy aging, think about age and dementia friendly communities and what those would mean and what changes we could realistically undertake to make our communities more accessible to all. That's probably the biggest thing that I would like. Okay, great. And finally, is there anything I didn't ask you that you would like listeners to know about ServiceLink, aging in New Hampshire, or where to get resources? Well, I'm going to do a selfless pitch, which is if you're interested, please come and volunteer for us. Oh, good call. I forgot about volunteer opportunities. We love volunteers. We especially love volunteers during Medicare's open enrollment. So we love to have folks who are helping us reach everyone in our, the four corners of our counties and the four corners of our state to access useful Medicare information. So please come volunteer for any program, of course. Uh, We'd love that. And I welcome anyone to reach out to us. Please look at our website. Please give us a call if you have any question. And we love hearing from you. And please keep reaching out. Okay. Well, that sounds fantastic. Carissa, I really appreciate you coming on the program today. I feel like you are going to get a lot of great response when people hear what ServiceLink can do and what you can offer. It's just nice to know in the midst of this crazy time that we have a resource for every single person in New Hampshire. And I really appreciate you taking the time to explain this to us. Well, thank you so much, Kathleen. It's been an honor to tell everyone about ServiceLink. And I hope I did my other ServiceLinks proud too. So please reach out. Thank you for sharing our mission and our message and advocating for us as well. We need to give voice to folks who are aging here in New Hampshire and raise that up. And we're happy to be a part of this system. 
That's fantastic. So that's our show for today. If you enjoyed it, please tell your friends about us so we can grow our tribe. Visit our website, seniorityauthority.org to submit questions for future shows and watch archive episodes. If you have questions for Carissa, pop them in there and we will get an answer back to you. Give us a rating on your favorite podcast platform and visit us on social media. Until next time, enjoy the chance to get smarter about growing older. And that's it. Thanks to our show sponsor, The Riverwoods Group, Northern New England's largest family of nonprofit retirement communities, where active adults find community, purpose, and peace of mind. Visit riverwoodsgroup.org. That's our show for today. Did it spark a question? If so, send us your questions at seniorityauthority.org and we'll track down the answer. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, and rate us on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time, let's get smarter about growing older.